I'm here to talk about open source. Um, my name is Christian Nehle. Um, uh, in English, I go by Chris. Uh, and I live in Dortmund. And um, I work um, for an initiative called DOFOS. Um, the name breaks down in two parts. Um, DO um, stems from Dortmund. Uh, and everything in Dortmund is abbreviated uh, with DO, D-O. Uh, and uh, our initiative aims for FOSS, um, free and open source software. And so we called ourselves DOFOS, which makes uh, uh, even sense in English because it's an imperative and says uh, do uh, free and open source software. Um, so um, we, we uh, wanted to keep our name uh, plain. Um, we aim for um, free and open source software, as, as the name uh, states. Um, I personally come from a very curious background for um, everything that has to do with accessible knowledge, um, um, that gives uh, empowers people, um, that brings people together, that uh, helps form um, communities, uh, and is not exclusive. So I'm also interested in various other topics uh, that start with open. Um, but our initiative um, wanted to focus on um, free and open source um, software. Um, it could be easily assumed that we also aim for open data, which is also a big topic for the administration, also the municipal administration. But when we first entered um, the stage of uh, our local initiatives and politics, we did not want to be perceived as uh, a couple of guys who know everything about uh, digitalization and can comment on everything. Um, and uh, even though I would say open data, for example, and open source software um, have a strong relation, um, you need to bring forward uh, very different kinds of arguments and it's uh, two, can, can be two very separate worlds and so we limited ourselves um, to the FOSS world. Um, we started out in uh, 2014, uh, just a couple of uh, guys who were enthusiastic about uh, FOSS and we wondered why isn't our administration um, on board? Uh, with FOSS, like uh, what's the deal? So uh, we maybe were also a little bit uh, naive in the beginning. Uh, uh, we didn't ask uh, we didn't ask ourselves too much on why the other side, uh, like the administration, developed in a way that it did. Why is it? Uh, how, how come that it is so pro proprietary? Is that that's the right word? Um, Somewhat, <laughs> um, and I, in looking back, I would say it was also good that we were a little naive um, because uh, then we could be very straightforward uh, with our um, uh, view on free and open source software and didn't make uh, some things too complicated. Um, so we could be very straightforward. And in the beginning, uh, coming from this uh, naive background, we thought, well, let's write uh, the Lord Mayor uh, a letter explaining our well thought through arguments. Um, it all makes sense. It's rational. Um, he'll understand. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, playing with this idea, um, we, we realized, well, uh, in Dortmund, we have an administration um, of about uh, 10,000 people. We have uh, 600,000 inhabitants. And um, so it's quite a big um, city. It's quite a big uh, administration. And then we thought, well, if the Lord Mayor has so many um, employees, um, he probably doesn't do everything himself. So if you write him a letter, uh, he will just hand it down to somebody. and. Uh, from the administration and they will um, answer for him. And that's actually how administration uh, works. So all we would have gotten would have been a letter from the IT department of the city and uh, probably would have said, uh, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> and so our initiative would have been dead from the beginning. And so we wondered, um, how do you, how do you um, 
uh, catch a big fish, like a really big fish. And uh, it's uh, by catching smaller fish first. And so we did something uh, not very digital. Um, we started, um, uh, in German, we say uh, Klinkenputzen. We uh, started to show up at uh, different uh, places uh, and uh, started to have little chats first before addressing uh, the local parliament or the mayor. So, for example, we um, uh, 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 what's a Datenschutz? Uh, Privacy, data, security, things like that. Yeah, um, um, the, the person who is responsible for the data security of the citizens. Um, so we, we went to that uh, person who is also an employee for um, uh, the, the administration. And we said, well, uh, uh, um, open source has uh, certain uh, abilities contributing to uh, data security for, for the citizens. Uh, what do you think about it? And uh, how do you feel uh, towards the software we are using right now um, from, for example, Microsoft? And uh, then we also, uh, for, for this kind of chat, we dug up uh, some uh, documents um, from, from the national level. Um, and, you know, we, we could really um, strengthen our own arguments uh, by that. And uh, so we, we did that part. We went to the union and uh, said, well, if you want to be able to participate in the uh, technology we use in the administration, um, well, open source uh, gives you that um, ability. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, in history, it, it has always been the thing of unions to be able to participate in the uh, means of production. So um, they were quickly on, on board with it. And so we did all these kinds of things. Then we advanced uh, at some point to um, parties. And uh, that uh, took years. <laughs> so uh, what I say now in uh, two or three minutes, it, it took years um, and took a lot of talks. It took a lot of um, uh, things that needed to be put in writing. Uh, and we needed to point out um, various uh, conflicts. For example, uh, um, in the procurement strategy of the city, um, like if you have a vendor login um, with, with Microsoft, um, you don't have uh, um, competition when you, when you procure a new software. Uh, you always say from the beginning, yeah, it's going to be Microsoft next. You know, whatever comes, uh, comes after Windows 10, it's going to be uh, that what we're going to use. And uh, that is not uh, in line with the European law at this point. And uh, so pointing out all these uh, um, cont contradictions um, it, uh, and uh, under the rule of law, it uh, became more and more a problem to deal uh, with a certain uh, with, with a, a software infrastructure we're having right now. And um, this always strengthened our argument. And um, in a parallel process, which we didn't have anything to do with, uh, the uh, discussion about um, digital uh, sovereignty um, emerged. And uh, I think this is very much due to um, a shift in, uh, in the political landscape on a world stage. Um, with the election of uh, Donald Trump, um, um, the Europeans uh, looked west and a lot of um, always um, for granted taken um, relationships um, started uh, to, um, to come with a question mark. Like uh, we, we found out more and more that our, uh, I call it in German, the immaterial infrastructure which is which is the software um, that our whole immaterial infrastructure in the federal republic of germany and and beyond um, is uh, is uh, not ours it belongs to um, somebody else uh, 
a company uh, or multiple companies and uh, these companies might be under the influence of a uh, um, foreign government which uh, is not in line with the interests of the government here uh, here meaning germany or uh, europe and uh, that started um, a big political shift and uh, from from looking west um, we in europe started looking east and we saw china um, emerging very strongly and also having a lot of power in the software industry and uh, in the uh, in the infrastructure sector and so um, europeans started to wonder where is our sovereignty going to be like in a strongly shifting political world and so the idea of this digital sovereignty emerged um, which is being pushed forward by the ministry of the interior uh, from, from germany uh, and i think this is due to the reason that that they are um, in charge of the um, uh, uh, grundgesetz um, the um, the Bill of Rights, uh, something like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they, they needed to be able to protect um, uh, the data of the citizens. And uh, like with, with data protection, um, we don't want to protect the data. We want to protect the person um, behind this data. And so there started the, uh, more and more people in, in charge started to realize this and uh, suddenly in Dortmund we were um, somewhat ahead of a wave because we already developed um, uh, very specific arguments um, for the municipality um, to move towards open source and um, so suddenly people started to ask us, <laughs> like uh, today, um, how did you do it? What was that about? And what kind of arguments uh, did you develop? And um, this also gave a very strong push um, to the political discussion here in the local, uh, in the local politics. And uh, in this way, uh, um, we cooperated um, with, uh, as, as an initiative, we cooperated with um, the municipal administration uh, and uh, um, started to give hints to the local politics. Um, and then they um, decided now in, in, in February um, that they want to have this open source um, first strategy. And uh, this means um, um, that we, uh, like be before you, you had, uh, before this um, decision, we had to explain that open open source is maybe an alternative, uh, and it may be good. And uh, now this switched around, and the proprietary software has to explain why um, only it can be used and not an open source software so this is um, the trick uh, if you will um, because this way the administration has to say why it uses which kind of software and it has to say why open source is not possible and that's um, the big um, change we're experiencing right now and um, with the um, uh, Deutscher Städtetag. Um, it's it's uh, you maybe know it. It's, it's an organization of um, very uh, cities that have a certain um, uh, population organized in it um, throughout of Germany. Uh, they want to put forward. Um, uh, yeah, it's a special bericht, um, a special report. Um, uh, stating that we need to move towards more open source and they want to um, uh, contribute to the discussion and uh, we also work on that um, special report which is um, due in May and it's going to consist of two parts um, the first part um, that is um, explaining what is open source um, why do we want to 
implemented in, in the public infrastructure. And the second part, uh, and this is the part, um, the first part you probably already know very much already. The second part is, I think, for me now, the really exciting part, and it will be due in autumn. Um, and it's going to ask the question of, of governance. Um, what kind of institutions, what kind of instruments do we need uh, in the public administration in order to um, really implement and handle um, open source? Um, like, uh, uh, like if I want to procure a software um, as, as, a, as an employee of a public administration, how do I know which license qualifies as open source? Um, uh, that's a very basic question and that needs to be answered and it needs to be answered for a lot of municipalities and uh, all these kinds of thoughts we need to ask ourselves how do we um, um, get software from another city like a usual procurement process is from the administration to the um, a company so there needs to take place uh, a strong shift and um, the people who do it need to know how to do it and that's going to be um, answered uh, in some way in the governance uh, report that is due in autumn and uh, I think um, uh, one last uh, thought before we maybe go into a discussion um, it's uh, I think now it's a very different uh, time to have this discussion about digital sovereignty. Um, like if it would have been 20 years ago, it would have gone very differently. And now we not only have this uh, different geopolitical um, uh, landscape, we also have uh, a lot of uh, pressure um, due to climate change uh, because the world, it's, uh, uh, and I at least the people I see in the videos, so we are about the same age <laughs> and we're going to live some time on this earth and we're going to see very strong um, changes. And it's going to put a lot of uh, pressure on us and the world is going to be more turbulent um, and it's not going to be as calm um, as, it's, as it may have been or as it may be now. Um, so we need uh, a very strong resilience in the infrastructure and uh, open source in the digital sector, it, it gives us this uh, resilience. Like uh, we've seen now in, in, the, in this pandemic uh, uh, that our infrastructure already is not as resilient as uh, it maybe should be or at least as we wish it would be. Uh, but this pandemic is... Uh, uh, nothing compared to what is going to hit us um, due to climate change and climate change is always um, uh, more ahead of us than we scientifically know and it's not uh, slowing down so this is for me also a very strong motivation um, this resilience in our infrastructure uh, due to open source um, for all these things to come so um, uh, while talking, I had one last uh, thought that may be interesting for you. Um, I'm, I'm going just to copy one link in, in the chat because we also um, um, we work together with many um, institutions over the time and we um, uh, display them all on a, on a home page. Um, we have the Free Software Foundation Europe, um, we have uh, the Union, we have uh, the Document Foundation, um, we have uh, uh, the Open Source Business Alliance, um, we have uh, a climate association, we have a local church uh, which helped us uh, a lot uh, for having a place where we can be and, and uh, hold certain kind of rallies or so. Uh, and um, uh, this was also a big part to, to integrate uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the free software community and in the uh, local community. And uh, this helped us also very strongly to get ahead. Yes, so far. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Um, and, and very good English, actually. Um, <laughs> so I think, uh, I think we can uh, open up 
um, the discussion. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, uh, yeah, Jacob still, yeah, maybe you want to take over here. No, I'm happy to, thank you, Christian. That, that was, that was excellent. Um, um, learned a lot. Question for you. When you, when you say you, you're having an open source first policy, does that mean you're also looking for, uh, for solutions that are coming from other cities? Yes. Um, um, uh, there was, I put another, going to put another link in the chat so you can see all the um, logos um, that makes sense. We are in a strong need of a, um, an, an open source repository for the public service. Um, that's, for example, uh, what I mean by institution. We need new kinds of institutions um, for governance. And uh, uh, um, like, like GitHub, for example, um, we need a point where we can look to, where we can go to if we want to see that other cities already um, uh, make a program that uh, we're in need of, or do we want to um, be part of the development and um, uh, we as an initiative but also the city uh, uh, they, we, we put forward um, this initiative and um, the state I live in, um, in North Rhine-Westphalia um, you may know Germany has 16 states along with uh, the federal level we have 17 governments in Germany <laughs> so that's uh, quite something and uh, North Rhine Westphalia is uh, going to develop. Uh, now they just announced that in March um, they're going to develop um, an open source um, code repository. And this is how we are going to, that's, that's a very important thing, I think, to interact with other cities um, to, uh, where we can take, but where we also should and must um, contribute. Uh, did does this answer your question, or did I yeah. carry? Did I get Thank carried you. away? Thank you very much. No, that's perfect. Thank Denise. You had a question. I do have a question. Um, first of all, great work. Uh, you're going to need, uh, and maybe you already have this, some um, concise descriptions or or tests of what is sufficiently open for your uses, because for a long time you're going to be splitting hairs. So you mentioned GitHub, for instance. Uh, there are alternatives to GitHub that are more open, but of course, GitHub is in the business of selling itself to enterprise. And so a lot of the fast moving features are at GitHub. Now, there is an effort at IEEE to build a platform based on GitLab. That's what they call pure open source. And I would think that that would be a better choice for, for y'all if you were going to try to figure stuff out. The, the, my real question is about the term digital sovereignty. Um, as often happens in people's ears when, when translating across languages, words sound differently in different ears, right? So for instance, um, the word scheme in British English means plan in American English. And the word scheme in, in American English is kind of shifty and not trustworthy. <laughs> Right. So there's little there's there's little differences in the way we hear certain words, even within English. Um, digital sovereignty to me, especially with the language that surrounds it, sounds like a nationalist effort. And I'm troubled by the potential rise of nationalism under the banner of open source, because um, Part of why we've made the leaps forward that we've made in the last 20 years, which is my whole open source career, is that everybody was in it together and trying to solve the same problems. And so there was economies of scale. There were reasons why people would build things. We can't really afford to go into little individual country islands of code, right? That That's not going to work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm anxious to see us share things um, based on a a rubric of what does open source mean to municipal governments and academia rather than um, creating a, an effort or, or rallying around an effort for independence that my other concern about it is um, I've done, been doing this a long time and 
I watched Brazil, for instance, get very interested in open source. So interested, in fact, that we we were all we open open source advocates were all asked to do campaign pictures with prominent politicians that were running for president in Brazil one year. And then, of course, the next administration that came in came on a platform of let's undo all that craziness and the open source community suffered because of it. So finding a commonality that isn't politically motivated is another piece of advice that I have. Um, so that was that was three pieces of advice. It, number one was um, don't be afraid to look to the West for pure open source solutions and figure out what open source means to you. That's the first one. The second one is come up with a better term than digital sovereignty because it's terrifying, <laughs> particularly coming from Germany. And number three is um, think about um, building a, a network as Jacob has been advocating and I've been helping him all this time, a, a network around Europe, but outside of Europe as well, make a network of municipalities that want to work this way and then hold them to some code of conduct that indicates that they're they're walking the talk. I would include contribution back as one of those things. And, um, and then I have a question at the end of it, which is you said that there was a study going on now. The last study that was done by the European Union, European Commission, was actually conducted by Deloitte. And it was very, very difficult working with Deloitte. You can ask Aster about that. It was not easy because they are actually predisposed not to have it work out right because it means they have to change how they behave. The only way that it could happen in the last round was because um, rented expertise was required by the European Commission. So they had to have bona fide open source people involved somehow. But those people were not involved in the final outcomes of the report. So I think it'd be good if there was a new way to create these kinds of reports that um, were still rigorous, but were not led by companies whose business model was threatened by a change. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can, I can try to uh, comment on that. And, uh, Great. You, we have a lot of um, uh, various parts. Um, let's maybe start with, with the part I, I feel most passionately about. Um, I, I absolutely agree with you. The last thing we want is some European country uh, going sovereign. <laughs> um, uh, right. Just the sound of it is, is not good. Uh, for well, so I, I, would res I would respectfully suggest technical independence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, uh, I just. Wrote, wrote I think it gets down. at what they're trying for. Um, yeah, the the, um, the the term digital sovereignty it's it's not uh, coined by me or us at the local level. Um, I'm actually not sure where it originated, but I know it from this um, federal um, uh, discussion, and uh, um, that's where it has been coined. Uh, the association with uh, being nationalist, um, um, I can see where that comes from. And like I said, it's I think the last thing we want uh, some European country uh, going sovereign. It's, uh, it wasn't the way to go uh, looking uh, at history. And I, I personally uh, very uh, strongly for the European Union, um, which I think is, is also very important to state um, these days. Uh, I think uh, what drives me for open source is um, having solutions that bring people together and not um, yes. split them um, apart. And um, in the sense of uh, um, open source, um, I, I think um, what what speaks to me at, at this uh, about this is um, uh, I can have a, a local solution, uh, I, but I can also collaborate. Um, worldwide. Mm -hmm. So I can collaborate with the USA and uh, China and if something um, goes in a different direction I can just fork or keep my technical independence uh, and I think that is what uh, this uh, thought of um, this um, digital sovereignty is uh, uh, about for me and in that sense I understand it as a quite friendly 
um, concept because it allows me to co collaborate, um, but it does not force me in any way. Um, so that's that's how I understand it, and I also understand it in, in the context of the um, sustainable development goals, um, because it helps uh, in the technological um, transfer, uh, especially um, to the global south. Uh, I can I can give something away without having less, and I think uh, that is awesome uh, in, in this sense of. Um, uh, uh, what do you say, like uh, helping the global north, uh, helping the global south from the, um, the global north. Um, right, I think that's all great. And I, I think that most of the ideas that you talked about are perfect. What I'm telling you, I'm first of all, let me say, I should, I should have said this first. I, I live in Europe now. I plan to live in Europe for the rest of my life. I'm interested in Europe succeeding <laughs> and the little European state that I live in succeeding as well. I live in Ireland. Um, they, I know from 22 years of doing open source that the best way forward is to grow the world pizza because then all countries get a slice of that pizza that grows as well, along with growing adoption. But I also know how the for-profit world has used open source to do different things. I was involved in some of those projects, right? And figuring out how to keep projects alive when the profit motive is, is um, less evident is gonna be important. But also, since you talked about fixing procurement, which is a great idea and all power to you, um, the UK tried to do this about three, four years ago. There are a couple of people around that, were, that helped them and they can tell you what worked and what didn't about how that all worked, right? I think that open sourcing shared experience is also valid. So coming up with fora that allow you to ask the UK, how, what did, how did you change your procurement? Because they've not done a ton of talking about it, right? And what worked and what didn't? Asking you guys that, how did you change your procurement and what worked and what didn't? Those kinds of things. Because they've only asked you the first set of questions. What were your reasons? Or how did you convince people? But there's a bunch of questions behind that. <laughs> I think uh, that's what's what is next um, for us. Um, a lot of talking. Um, we um, well, for, for one thing, um, we as a municipality, um, we can't work isolated like we're on an island. Um, we need um, to integrate um, with the um, different levels um, above above us and. Um, uh, we are going as a city um, or the city of Dortmund is going to invite um, to a um, um, municipal um, open government conference. Um, we have an organization uh, in, uh, in Bonn. Uh, it's called OK NRW, uh, which means uh, uh, Open Municipals, uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. And uh, they are about all kinds of um, stuff that is open around the municipality, open data and open source um, software. And um, they conducted the first municipal open government conference 2018 in, um, in, in Cologne. And we want to adapt um, this format um, for us and we want to invite um, everybody who is interested um, from civil society to um, to people um, from other, other municipalities or um, the state level and the special report um, 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 we are going to put forward um, um, this year i think it's going to help us a lot um, placing dortmund in a strategic way on the on the map of the open source um, discussion um, and we need um, uh, so we need several instances um, to to lead this discussion, and we need uh, places where we can bring people um, together uh, to to describe a way um, forward and uh, to have uh, new kinds of um, uh, organ organizational ideas uh, in the public service on how we do stuff. And we also need to bring um, people from uh, the state level together 
with people um, that work in, uh, in, in the industry or in civil initiatives um, to have an understanding for the needs of each other. Um, because often uh, what somebody from an administration says doesn't translate very well to somebody who works who is engaged in a civil um, uh, society at some point because they wonder like what, where does this need to come from what what's the vocabulary about we don't understand each other so we need to make sure that it translates very well and that's one of the next steps um, we want um, to take here and that's maybe maybe exactly the point um, where we can also implement those experiences yeah well that's really exciting i'm glad to hear where you're headed next Thank you. I'll stop being the only person talking now. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. That that was those were great uh, points to 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 really drill in on. Phil, I I'm, I am I see lots of parallels to what Chris has been saying to what uh, you know Paris's journey has been, including the idea of being you know very strategic in this open you know having the city itself be taking a leadership role. Not as an island, but as as, as leading a, a community. Might you, I don't know, talk a little bit about anything that Christian um, spoke on and your thoughts on this? Well, I'm very impressed, um, I must say, uh, by all this work and the fact that you actually had uh, elected officials uh, switch from uh, their old and bad habits to open source first and congratulations on this it's impressive um yes i i can see a lot of parallels between uh you guys and us and <laughs> i don't know what can be next uh i must say uh i i definitely want to see how far you can go um i we're in the middle of the process of as i was saying building our ospo um, I think I don't. I don't know if this is something that you've already talked to uh, or talked about uh, in, in Dortmund, uh, or if this is something too early so far. I don't know. Um, creating an OSPO, you mean? Yes. Um, uh, not yet. Um, that's uh, that would be due um, to the new um, uh, strategy for digitalization mm -hmm. i see um because at, at the city of paris we've um we're we've been doing open source uh for the last 20 years uh building our own uh digital digital service engine uh as well as using and contributing to other projects uh, to other open source projects uh no matter how, how much, when, whatever, but we produce our own and we use somebody else's, which I think is a correct balance uh, to, to oversee what we need to take care of when we're building our own. Um, of course, we're also trying to promote our own tool uh, as well as promote the tools we use um, I, I think it's very important to foster um, the use of open source within the city within the different um, departments uh, operational departments uh, within the city um, and yeah I, I think we're in the middle of something where open source now needs like a, 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 a mission needs that the elected official people bring and officialize some kind of a mission so that way whenever they leave they come and go this mission remains and now we can see in the middle to long term how we can implement uh, 
the 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 role of such a mission. Um, this is something that I've talked about this morning. Uh, I, I was quite challenged by a, an unexpected question, <laughs> and I think this is uh, something that we need to to bring and to 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 make sure that happens it is being independent from. Well, we're very, very lucky at the city of Paris. It's that uh, during the last uh, municipal uh, elections, um, we had the Greens that w that came first or almost first, and they're very uh, pushing. Well, they're they're pushing open source very much. So this is great to us. This is a uh, this is very good news. What if in four years somebody else comes in power? and drops the whole idea of pushing open source forward. My job, <laughs> lots of people uh, jobs, and all of our efforts would go down and would be forgotten. Um, it's, uh, I think it's very important to, to, to make sure our software, your software, other cities' software remain no matter what. Um, we're sitting on top of a 65 million euros worth software at the city of Paris. It's been built in 20 years. It's come, it's gone. I mean, but still 20 years after we're still sitting on top of this. It would be a shame just to throw everything away because somebody very close friends to whoever decides to, to 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 quit. This is exactly what happened in Madrid. Uh, they they used to develop something called console. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a it's a digital tools software or platform, and all of a sudden, the new municipality comes and says, OK, no more means to develop console. So the projects just collapsed. Um, I think this is something that we need to be aware of and be very careful it doesn't happen in our own towns. So I think there's a, a, yeah, there's a watch to be organized. There is also external collaborations to set up just to make sure it's there, it's anchored, and elected officials follow this and also tell us what. Thank you, Jacob. I was about to, to mention this. Um, we've also um, tried as much as possible to make our open source policy as visible as possible. Um, and we were advised of this. Uh, we didn't come out with this idea ourselves. Um, we brought this uh, website uh, that Jacob just shared uh, just to make sure that there is something that's anchored, that's uh, it, it's a will from the, the, the first deputy mayor at the city of Paris to bring and to follow open source and to push open source forward. Um, yes. So I wanted to just jump in on this. I, we put in there the, the something called what we're, we're, we're coining the define your open source. One of the things we've seen is, is that um, when organizations reach a maturity level, they launch a open source program office or whatnot. Most of them then define what their organization is about by using the, dom the domain prefix open source dot Paris dot FR or open source dot American Airlines dot com or open source dot Microsoft dot com. It's becoming a we're trying to it, it has become an industry standard in industry. We're trying to, to shift that over into governments and and universities. And so Paris is one of the first ones we asked to say, could you def could, could you write down what it, what 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 is Paris's engagement, mission, whatever it wants to, to describe, but this becomes a bit of a standard 
and we'd like to see if we couldn't get, you know, what would open source .dortmund you know, your official site be? What would open source the European Commission dot, you know, it sets a bit of a standard that we can all at least then say, we're part of a community that's doing this together. It's the very first step in, 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 in that. Yeah, I will really take this uh, thought along. I, I already like it uh, very much. Uh, and uh, uh, also from Philippe, uh, um, you reminded me of something I have uh, forgotten uh, and uh, also gave me some things uh, to really take along. Um, because in Dortmund, I also paste a link in the chat. Um, um, I don't know what all these parties are called in English, but uh, we, um, um, our, our um, decision for open source, it is it has been carried by um, the major conservative party, um, the party of Angela Merkel, uh, as well as by the socialist uh, Democrats, um, the, the second uh, party in, in the federal government right now, it also been carried by the Greens and also by um, the Liberals and also by the left um, party. Um, and these are the main uh, uh, parties uh, we have in our local um, uh, municipality. And uh, they decided on this um, together. And uh, this made me especially happy because we, we didn't just get a decision uh, like uh, with a couple of votes, the majority and next term is going to take a shift again. Um, they they took a decision that has been carried uh, uh, together and uh, this, this won't uh, just fall over because there's another election so there's um, some stability um, to be expected out of this uh, decision that makes me very happy and I think that reminded me of another um, aspect that has been quite important uh, to me um, like me personally, um, I'm also very motivated for open source um, by my uh, worldview. Um, that, that really uh, drives me um, um, to be able to share uh, and to be an, in an open uh, interaction with, with people. Um, but for the, for the sake of the political discussion, um, we um, uh, stripped the open source uh, discussion of this worldview. And we put forward uh, mainly um, technical arguments that we need a more flexible, resilient architecture that uh, fits together uh, in all kind of ways like, uh, like we see it in the public um, service. And uh, that made it um, adaptable from the left um, to the right in a political sense. So we put together forward an, a non-technical view. And uh, I also like Philip, what you said, like that that you, that you need a kind of narrative. Um, that also reminded me um, how important it is to be aware that uh, people who do um, politics. The, um, like like every community, uh, they, they have their own uh, wording, their own language in, in a way, you know, like, and uh, if I um, go forward uh, in, in the, uh, to, to the politics and uh, speak my own language, like from the open source background, they won't understand, they won't care. So I have to put it in terms um, that they are used to and that they can understand. And I very much like the idea, like you said, to have an, a narrative um, that they that they carry on through the different terms. And uh, I think it's it's a good question. Like, what could this narrative uh, be? Um, like I said earlier, for me, it's, it's a strong uh, motivation to have a resilience um, in, in the infrastructure for for the catastrophes to come. And uh, maybe something like this. Um, can be a narrative um, for them, like just making sure the public service doesn't fail and keeps on running. Like uh, the last thing somebody in responsibility wants is that his service fails because he's going to be blamed. So maybe this is something we can phrase for them. And also what, what you, uh, you reminded me of is, um, yes, we need, uh, uh, like we need more than the open source software. We need an open source ecosystem. 
uh, where where it, it can thrive and many things um, belong uh, to this ecosystem uh, in an often very equal way so we shall not forget about that i agree um yeah sorry sorry Philly. i was gonna say that 10 years into running the open source initiative i decided to try to get all the open source projects involved in its governance to be more representative of everything that was going on. And we put together a group of the leaders of all the prominent open source projects you can think of. And to my horror, I discovered that we couldn't do anything together because we had so many differences in the way we talked about things and the way we ran our individual projects that we couldn't decide where to have lunch together, much less how to move forward you know, to make the OSI more, more broad because everybody's agenda got in the way. So I think it's worth putting down and thinking about common principles that everybody can agree on and then holding on to those. Uh, it'll be a hard exercise because there's language differences and there are so many um, different motivations. But I think it's worth pushing for that early and then holding on to it. You'll end up with refuseniks because that's what happens. You ought, I mean, but polarity is better than a hundred different people who supposedly agree and can't even talk to each other, right? Um, so anyway, that was one of my big lessons learned from the early days of open source. We didn't do enough to harmonize what it meant. We thought the open source definition was going to be enough, but it turned out that how you practice is really important and makes it harder for people to collaborate if they don't sort of agree 